Cool. So I'm recording now. Let me share my screen first. Um, and then we'll later on uh, switch to the second host um, screen. Um, um, what should we have opened up right now? Like, do we need to go? I guess maybe you'll tell us then. Yeah, I'll tell you. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Cool. Um, okay. So the purpose of this session and then video is to go over some of the steps for configuring your computer. Um, in this case, we're focusing on Mac, but it's a similar scenario for PCs. Um, to configure your computer to access the compute cluster Gypsy that we use for work. Um, and uh, we'll go over through some of the steps that I posted on the data science for neuroscientists help this channel on Slack. Um, some of them are shown, a lot of the steps are showing here. Um, now, what is the end result of this? Is, let me open an R Studio session, like just so you can see what this looks at the end. Um, um, oops, I didn't want to open it that way. Um, um, sorry. What this looks at the end is like you can use a program like CyberDuck, which is opening right now on my computer. Um, or is it trying to open? Um, you can use a program like CyberDuck or WinSCP if you're on PC to access the Gypsy cluster, JSPC. Um, and then this program, um, let me just log into, oh, here. So here, for example, it, it logged in automatically to a particular directory at Gypsy. Um, uh, how can I make this bigger? I don't think I can. Um, anyway, uh, through CyberDuck, we can then edit with our studio. And uh, CyberDuck, what it does is that it will synchronize the file that we have in our computer to the one on the, the cluster. Um, WinSCP does something similar for this. Um, and once our studio opens, um, here it opened the file on my computer. This one I can do, I can make bigger. Um, and uh, we're not going to be running R in our computer because the purpose of all of this is to analyze either data that we have in common or data that is too big. So Instead of that, uh, R Studio uh, in recent versions has a terminal. Um, yay. So um, once it opens the terminal, we're going to be able to log in into the cluster. We'll set up SSH keys such that you don't need to type your password and stuff. Um, then once you're in the cluster, you can request a compute node. Um, We'll, we'll set up the cluster such that it loads a specific version of R automatically, such that it can then open R um, through this terminal. Um, right now it's loading R in the terminal. Okay, once R finally loads, then you can do stuff like um, from the script that we have opened uh, on our studio, uh, we could like manually uh, you know, edit and say like two plus two, uh, have some line of code, select it, copy it, paste it, right? But this takes a lot of time. So there's a shortcut that we, we'll learn such that you can just uh, use that shortcut and it will like evaluate the line of code on Gypsy, right? Um, um, so that, you know, is kind of the end goal of today, doing all this setup. Um, I'm not gonna save um, the file here because I don't want I don't want to save those edits. Okay. Uh, so that's where we need to get. And there's a lot of steps to get to that. So um, uh, let me send you some messages uh, first. So um, so. 
the first we need to do is install R um, in your computers. Um, so um, that we can do it from cran um, r projectorg um, I assume all of you have this, right? Yeah, yeah I think we all installed R in our studio for that like tutorial that Andrew gave us. Yeah. Um, so for our studio, can you tell me what version of our studio you have installed? For that, you need to open our studio. Um, mine is uh, opening it right now. Um, once you open our studio at the very, very top, there's a VR Studio um, label next to the um, maximal. You can click about our studio. And so it should be like 1.2.5 or newer. Mine is 1.2. 1 1.2 what? Oh, 1.25033. Okay. Zero. That should be good enough. Okay. I have the uh, same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. All right, so those those versions should work for this. Okay, so yeah, installing R, installing R Studio. Let's go back to the list. Uh, okay, so the next thing we need to do is to set up SSH keys. And so um, for that, we need to follow the instructions here. Um, so at this point, let me stop sharing my screen and we will have um, Sam Ho share his screen. Oh. Um, um, Abby, did, uh, did you get a Gypsy account? Um, no, I don't believe. Okay. Should I set that up now? Um, you can't do it that fast, um, but uh, 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 we, we need, uh, we'll need, I think, so. Um, I think Kristen has to be the one that requests your account. Um, I think it goes through Andrew, because I'm under his. Okay. So let me send you the link, Abby. Um, so you can do that in the meantime, but they won't approve it as fast, right? Uh, um, How can I grant access to, it, it is asking me to grant access through system preference to share the screen? Um, yeah, so if you go to uh, system preferences for Mac, Mm -hmm. Then security. Firewall. Mm -hmm. um, no, it's showing me some privacy screen. Screen for privacy. Yeah, it doesn't tell you anything and near the bottom. Uh, it says like, so I unlocked to change but it says nothing afterwards. Mm. Um, can you try sharing your screen again from um, Zoom and let's see if it opens anything. Yeah. Awesome, All right. Um, so I need you to open um, a terminal. Yeah. What should I turn? Sorry. Uh, the terminal you can open. You can find it on your applications. Yeah. Why is that? Um, Leo, so should we be following along and doing the same thing on our computer? Uh, this part you can't yet. Okay. Um, I mean, some of these parts you can. Sorry. Um. um it's just that you can't do all of it. Um, 
But yeah, so yeah, so yeah, Kristen and Abby, you could open your terminals too on your computers for this part. Um, uh, okay. So, um, Sam, can you open the link that I sent about uh, SSH keys? Yep. Is it where? It's further above, above your screenshots. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes, it's a gypsy uh, link. This one. Yeah. Um, so we're going to set up passwordless login. Um, we can do the side from our laptops for Kristen and Abby, but we won't be able to do the server side for mm -hmm. both Kristen and Abby. Um, so, um, Sanko, can you go to your terminal? Yep. Um, so, uh, when, when you open your terminal, it by default opens it in your home directory. Now, inside the home directory, there's a hidden directory for the SSH configuration files. So we're going to access, access that with the command cd or change directory space dot ssh. The dot before it, yeah, press enter. Press enter. Mm -hmm. The dot before it is, makes it hidden. And so let's, now let's see what files there are. And so for that, let's type ls for, uh, for list, um, then space dash l dash a, sorry, uh, not, the, not the dash, sorry. Um, dash l dash a h. So l will be for list, a will be for all, and h will be for human without spaces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And press enter. So by default, this is how it should look like there's nothing really there. There's only like a, a list of known hosts. Um, and so uh, the way that SSH keys work is that you have a file that identifies you that says like, this is how Leo looks like. And then um, um, another one that says, uh, this is me, right? Or I mean, this is, this is, um, uh, this is Leo and so, those two files, the one that says, this is the picture of how, of how Leo looks like, and then a description of Leo, those, are the, those two have to match in order to be able to log in without passwords. Mm -hmm. And so we need to create those files. And so for that, uh, Sanjo, can you copy paste the ssh-keygen uh, command from the website? So mm -hmm. I don't have that it's directory. Um, you don't have the .ssh directory, Abby? Yeah, correct. Um, are you um, on your home? I'm on my work laptop. Yeah, no, uh, sorry. When you, um, can you type PWD um, on your terminal? And it should be slash users slash. Um, so Sanjo, can you type PWD2 before the SSH? Yeah. PWE? Uh, D. D, oh. Yeah. Press enter. enter. Okay. So you should be um, the max are configured in such a way that it's like slash capital U users slash your username. Yeah, I'm there. Mm -hmm. So you, if, if you don't have that directory, um, you can create it with a, I'm going to type the command. Um, I'll just touch, like touch SSH. Uh, no, that touches a file, not a directory. Oh, uh, that's true. Make there, sorry. Yeah, make there. MKB here. Um, uh, so I posted it on Slack. Yeah. Sanko doesn't need to do that because he already has it, right? Yeah, I have it too. Okay. So now, uh, uh, so once um, once you have that directory and you're in the directory, uh, can you uh, copy paste then the ssh slash keygen command? and press enter. So this is going to create a, 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 a public and a private key pair. So this is like the description of you and the drawing of you. Uh, and so it says like, oh, do you want to save it in this file? And so uh, we, want that, we want that default file, um, which is uh, ID underscore RSA. So just press enter. Just press enter. Then uh, it asks for a passphrase for the key, and uh, I typically leave them empty, so we just press enter again. Okay. 
and again. All right. So now let's see what directories you have in the in, in what files you have in the directory. That was the ls command with a uh, well, it was ls space dash l h a. Oh, dash l h a. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So now we see that it created um, um, an id dot rsa rsa file and an id dot rsa dot pub file. Um, so um, we need to upload that public file into the cluster, right? Now this is something that Kristen and, and Abby cannot do for Gypsy, but you could in theory do this for um, another server that you use, that you have access to. I think you guys use um, a Libre server. So uh, the way that we need to do this is, um, can you scroll down on the website, Sanko? This website. Okay. Yeah. So copy. Uh, um, copy that command, but don't paste it on the terminal. You're missing a. Um, uh, uh, I think. Yeah, I think you're missing a quote at the end, right? A single quote. Oh yeah. 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 Copy it and paste it into like a text editor that you have somewhere. Text editor. Yeah. Like text edit, that should work. Okay. Okay. Oh. Um, I think it will work better if you do it in text edit instead of the stickies. Oh. Because stickies, I don't know if it does any formatting. Uh -huh. Text edit was uh, three uh, below stickies. Three below. Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. So instead of where it says uh, uh, less than your your underscore user ID greater than, replace that with your username for Gypsy. Okay. No, I don't need this break. You don't need you don't need the like, the greater than. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so if you're using another uh, server at this point, you can put. Um, your username and address for another server. All right. So let's, can you copy that? Okay. Mm -hmm. And now paste it on your terminal. Okay. Uh, press enter. Oh. So now you're logging into the cluster. It asks for your verification code that you have on your Google Authenticator. Okay. So this is the part that uh, that uh, Kristen needs a new code. Um, you can type your um, your password for the cluster. Mm -hmm. Cool. So now, um, can you type PWD? So wait. Uh, okay. Sorry. Um, okay. Uh, let's try, let's see if it worked. Can you open a new terminal? Uh, you can do that uh, with a um, command T for a new tab, I think. And Q. Yeah, I think so. Command T. Oh. Yeah. And so then uh, uh, from the text edit window, copy and paste the SSH, your username at the, the server part. Oh. Not all of it. Yeah. Just part. Yeah. Press enter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Sam Ho was able to log in using his SSH key into the cluster without copying his password. The way we can verify this is on the cluster. If you um, change directory into dot csh dot CD space. I, I sorry, sorry, saying how I didn't. I misspoke. It's uh, change directory CD oh, see. space into the dot SSH directory. Mm -hmm. Press enter. Just press enter. Mm -hmm. Then let's see the hidden files. List the hidden files. So that's the ls space. Oh. 
Dash L H A. Oh, okay. So what happened here is now um, uh, San Ho has an authorized underscore key files. Um, so we look at the syntax of the command that we copy pasted on your text edit. It said um, it says uh, it, the first command is cat, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, the path to the ID under, underscore RSA dot pub uh, key file. So this is the drawing of how San Ho looks. Then after that, we're, we're taking the contents of that key file and then um, we're logging in into the cluster. So that's the SSH, uh, his username at gypsy01 part. Um, once we logged in, we're then writing the contents of what we have using cat and we're appending them. So that's the two greater than into the dot SSH slash authorized keys uh, file. Right. So um, now that's one part. So this is something. Let's do another part. That this is something that both Kristen and um, and uh, Abby can also do, which is from the computer side. So um, go to your first tab of your terminal, please, um, Sanjo. Your terminal. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm going to copy paste some uh, code for your. Uh, don't, don't open a new terminal, sorry. Just go to oh, the first one. Oh, go back to the first one, okay. Yeah. So what I need all of you to do is to uh, create um, a config file. How you do it is, um, Abby already mentioned this command. Um, uh, the way to do that is with the touch command. So touch will say like, oh, create the file if it doesn't exist. So touch space config. Sorry, right. Can you type that on your uh, on your window um, okay. or copy paste, whichever you want. Then we need to open that file. You can do that with the open command. Um, this, this works uh, uh, well in, in Mac file, in Mac computers. If you're like um, on uh, uh, Windows or um, or Linux, you have to do it in a different way. So this is an empty file. So I want you to paste into it the contents that I uh, gave you on Slack. This one. Yeah. Uh, you missed an BH, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I need you to edit the user part. So instead of F ghost, that was Fernando Ghost's username. You, can you type your username? Okay. Mm -hmm. Then at the end, um, at the very end of the file, I need you to add an empty line. Empty At the very end. Here. Yeah, so press enter. Okay. Yeah, save that file. How do we know what our usernames will be if we don't have accounts yet? Uh, so you'll um, you'll get your username later, um, Abby. Um, okay. It's hard to know how it will be because it depends on which are the other previous users. It might be really similar to your um, jhead ID, uh, but it could be different. Uh, um, so for now, you can use your jhead. Um, and if you're logging into a different cluster or, or computer, Instead of uh, the username and hostname that we have for Gypsy, you can uh, use another one there. Now, what we're doing with this is specifying some options for SSH that we want to use by default. So, uh, can you go back to your terminal, Sanjo, yeah. and open a new a new tab? New tab. Okay. And then type s uh, type ssh space j. Okay. Press enter. Oh. So what this did was the coolant of um, of uh, Sanko typing SSH, his username at the host name, plus enabling the X11 options that we want. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So, so, um, so for, for the, for us, like I got like prompted for a verification code. Is that because yes. you didn't sign in to the cluster? Because you don't have your SSH key yet. Yeah, uh, got it. Okay. So, so this part works, but it asks for your um, password, right? Yeah, and like, exactly. Um, and then in Abby's case, she doesn't have a username even yet. Yeah. Right? Um, uh, okay. Sanjo, can you type exit on the window you're in? Here. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, um, um, Type it again, please. So the, the first exit uh, uh, exited the cluster. The second exit will close that terminal window. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> On your third tab, well, whatever. We don't. You don't need to close it. Yeah. Okay, just to leave it. Okay. Close it is. Okay. Okay. So at that point, I'm going back to our list of things. Um, so we did the fourth, the third bullet point, which was set up SSH keys. We also did the fourth bullet point, which was edit uh, SSH config. The next step is to install Cyberduck. Um, and so uh, let me paste the link for Cyberduck. Um, uh, so, um, I believe that San Cole already installed it, but um, but uh, in the meantime, Kristen and Abby can install it, right? So um, I see you have it already installed because um, I see the little duck on the, yeah. right? Um, so, but um, let's say you were to install it. If you, uh, if you press download, then it will download an image. Um, um, you need you need to select the version. Click the blue add to Chrome button, then click add extension. Yeah. So I mean, um, Sanko doesn't need to do this, but um, uh, but both Kristen and and Abby need to download it, right? Okay. Um, uh, Kristen and Abby, can you let me know when you're done installing? Although this part is also needs a cluster access, right? But we can start doing some of it. Wait, which part needs the cluster access? Uh, uh, we're going to configure CyberDuck to log uh, into okay. the cluster. But not downloading but I, it. Yeah, I downloaded it. That seemed fine. OK. So uh, Sanko, can you open CyberDuck at the very uh, bottom of your screen, that okay. yellow duck? Yeah. OK. So first, it wants you to open a, OK, so yeah, it's first, at the beginning, it's empty. So we want to do a open connection, which is the globe there. And so this lets us say, like, oh, let's specify uh, what protocol we want to use to log into what server. And so on the very first menu, that says FTP protocol. Um, just click on it. And then select the fifth option, which is SFTP, which is SSH file transfer. The server for this is jhpce jhpce01.jhsph.edu. The port is 22. Your username, um, uh, we won't type that yet because under SSH private key, SSH. it's near the bottom, SSH private key. Oh. Uh, click choose. And uh, click ID on the score RSA. So, mm -hmm. okay. so choose that one. Um, okay. Um, and then uh, press connect. Oh, it's not moving forward. <laughs> oh, sorry. I guess you do need to type your username. Sorry. Oh, okay. And password. Yeah, no password because no um, okay. you're using the SSH key. Hmm. Oh, yeah. And then uh, click on the always box and then click allow. 
so uh, at this point, uh, Sanho has logged in into cluster, but um, um, because this is something you're, you're going to be doing frequently, can you go to the very top of your screen, the very, 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 very top, and then on the bookmark, select new bookmark. Uh, and then uh, on their nickname, at the very top, yeah. I would uh, call it like JHPC home. JHPC, so should I delete? Yeah, you can delete that, yeah. Okay. Space home. Because we're going to have multiple bookmarks into it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can press uh, the X at the top left, the oh. red X. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, now let's assume that um, Sanjo is working on, um, well, we could do this more precisely. Is there a particular directory that you know you're gonna be working on? So he says, uh, Andrew says, I can download this. Okay. okay, so um, okay, so leave that open and somewhere we can see it. Yeah. And then go to uh, your CyberDog window. Mm -hmm. um, you have multiple CyberDog windows, I think. Multiple? That's the only one? Okay. Yeah, Just click, double one. click then on the on the on your bookmark, your HPC home bookmark. Try double click. Mm -hmm. On the JHPC home. Oh. Yeah. So then now that you're logged into the cluster, mm -hmm. um, can you go to the uh, menu that says go at the very top left to, of, on the left of bookmark, very top. Yeah. Say go to folder. And so type slash DCLO2. Type DCLO2. Slash. Slash. DCLO. DCL. B. No, D. D. You have it on your, on your, on your, uh, Word oh, okay, on okay. DCL. DCL. Press go. And then you want to go inside Lever. Lever. Oh. Then you want to go to A Jaffe. Oh. And then spatial transcriptomics. Spatial. And then human pilot. Yeah. At this point, I would make a new bookmark because this is uh, the home directory for many things we do for that project. A new mm -hmm. And I would change the name into like... Human pilot. Uh, human pilot or something. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, okay. So... Um, uh, looking again at my list of steps, sorry. Um, so with the, the fifth bullet, which is install CyberDoc, and the sixth one, which is set up CyberDoc bookmarks to your uh, Gypsy and then your main project folder. Um, we just finished that one. Um, and next, the one you just highlighted, which is learn how to open, that's the one we need to do now. Right. Okay, so um, can you go back to your CyberDoc and open your bookmark for your uh, human analysis, human pilot project? So let's just, um, this one is uh, actually one of the projects that I've worked on. So I made it already, already a little bit easier uh, because um, Sorry, I'm, look, I'm looking at it myself. Okay, so you should f see um, 
uh, human pilot dot r proj uh, file. Human. Oh, this one. Yeah. Yeah. So right click. No, mm. don't double click. No. So, you, when you double click, it downloads the file, and so oh. now you have you have it on your downloads on your computer. You need to delete it sometime to oh, avoid no. confusion. Okay. So right click, and then we're going to use edit with. Edit with. Edit with. Oh, there we go. And then R Studio, which is Command K. And so this is opening R Studio, and so. Let's take a, uh, a moment there to, to see what happened. So <clears throat> by the mouse of Sanjo, like on that gray bar, we can see that it's called slash private slash var slash folders, then a bunch of stuff, then like slash DCLO2 slash Liber slash Ajafi, all of that. So what CyberDog did is that um, it copied the content of the human pilot.r proj uh, file into um, a, te a temporary directory, which is a slash private slash var folders, etc. Um, and then once it did that, then it copied the full like file structure of where this file lives, which is slash dclo2 slash liber slash ajafi slash spatial graphics commit slash human pilot. And so the our what, what what it sees on the bottom right panel. Um, on the files panel is that it sees that human pilot.r project file and it sees the full like um, structure of it. So uh, just to make this a bit more fun, um, uh, Sanko, if you go back to CyberDoc, then double click on analysis. Yes. Analysis is one of the folders. Oh, double click. Mm -hmm. And then right click and let's say open convert uh, underscore SCE dot R. Sorry. What was convert underscore convert. SCE dot R. Oh, yeah. Right click on it and then edit with R Studio. Mm. Yeah. Oh, you already had an R Studio open. Okay, that's why it's messed up. Hey, oh. click on OK there. Close that file there. Yeah. And then do it okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So now we see that we have an analysis directory. Oh. And inside of that analysis directory, if you click it, if you open it, we'll see the convert underscore SCE, right? Click it. So, the, yeah. huh. so at this point, um, Sanko is able to open files and sync them with um, with a cluster. Now, in order to run stuff on the cluster, you now need to go on the uh, bottom left panel of our studio. Mm -hmm. You have a terminal window. Right now, you're in the console. Click on terminal. So now, at this point, we need to log in into the cluster. And we have our shortcut, which is SSH space, space J. Okay. Press enter. Now, um, right now you, we don't have all the stuff set up fast. So uh, first we need to uh, we need to do a lot of things manually. So first type QRSH. QRSH. This is to request a compute node. Press enter. It's going to request a compute node with the default um, settings that uh, Sanko has which by default is a um, compute node with two gigabytes of RAM free. Mm -hmm. uh, so very small. Okay. But now uh, in order to if you type capital R, it won't open R at this point. Because it says like command not found. So we need to load R. Uh, if you type module space avail. Menu. Now module. A module. Space. space avail for available. Avail. Mm -hmm. Press enter. I was going to show you all the different modules that are available. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and so one of, and 
uh, keep pressing enter, sorry, the space. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Are we looking for armor? Yeah, so we are already passed, but oh. um, I mean, this is a lot of output. Just keep pressing enter. Okay, uh, okay cool. So uh, the one that is for R um, is module space. Module space. Uh, we're going to load it. So uh, uh, type the command load space. And then it's conda. Uh, conda, C O N. C O N D A underscore capital R slash three point six point X. Three point. Sorry, what's the next? Three point six point X. Three point six point X. X, little X. Press enter. Okay. Now you type capital R. Strong. Oh, now it opens R, and so now you can like um, go to your line two of your script on the top left. Top, this one. No, no, no. Top left. Top left. Oh. Right. Go line two. Line two. Line two. Yes. And so there, you can go to um, you go to code on the very top of your screen. Code. Just file, edit, and then code at the very, very top. The very, very, oh, yeah. Then you could say um, send to terminal. Send to terminal. Which is the fourth option from the end to the beginning. So near the bottom of the screen. Oh. Right. And so what this did is that um, it evaluated that particular line of code and sent it to the terminal. So can you go back to code sent to terminal? But don't press, uh, don't, don't, don't press it yet. So, because we're gonna be doing this a lot, it's best to remember the shortcut for this, which is uh, that first key is shift, then um, command, and then enter. The last is enter. So if you go to you um, on the top left, top go left. to the third line, which third is line reg plot two, mm -hmm. and then press on your keyboard, Alt Command. Sorry. Um, Shift Command. Um, is it, sorry, is, uh, I think it's Alt Command Enter. Sorry, not Shift. Uh, I think Command Enter works on a Mac, like just. Yeah. Command. Okay. Command yeah. Enter sends it to the console. We want to send it to the terminal. So, so it's Sorry, almost like command I'm... enter. OK, so what do I? Uh, pr press Alt, Command, Enter. Alt, Command. Is R the same as option? Yes, oh. Alt is the same as option. OK, Option, Command, Oh, there we go. Right, and so that's the way you can evaluate stuff, right? Mm. Um, so at this point, you have a working uh, setup. It's not, you need to do a lot of things manually, but um, um, uh, but it, you know, it mostly works. Um, um, let's, uh, um, we can do a couple more things um, at this point um, to make it uh, such that, uh, uh, you know, um, your life is a little bit easier because <laughs> um, we can edit the behavior of the up and down keys when you're in the terminal. We can uh, configure your default QRSH, QRSH options. We can um, configure your terminal prompt. We can configure the default modules that you load once you QRSH such that you always load R. Um, and uh, yeah, we can change the behavior of your um, uh, history uh, such that you can search commands that you've typed in the past a lot easier. Um, uh, the oh, other okay. stuff is Git, um, Git and version control. Um, uh, 
So um, that's more stuff to learn at uh, that point. But um, uh, uh, I don't know. Um, I think all of this would be better if Kristen and Abby could also join us and, um, and could do the same things so uh, that we have. Um, uh, let's, um, we can do some of these things also for our own computers, right? Um, so if you want to, we can go over these things and do them for our own computers and, and then uh, uh, later on do them on the cluster. Um, so I don't know what you prefer um, or, because we're also close to 2 p.m. I don't know if you want to um, keep going or not. Um, it's up to you. I mean, I think it makes sense to wait. I mean, I guess maybe Abby, like fill out the like form or what you have to do and then like maybe communicate with us like on what like the timeline is that they're saying. Um, and I'm like working on getting my password reset and stuff. But I also think like probably some of it, like as far as we've gotten, like if we have the video, we could probably, we could probably like do it ourselves too. Like up until this point, Abby and I. Yeah, I mean, and also if you like continue with saying ho now and just record it, like we could probably like follow along later if you post the video. Sure. Um... Cool. Or if you okay. continue in a second session since it's two o'clock or whatever. Like. Um, so I, 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 I have the time. Um, I don't know. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, we can continue. And then uh, I don't know, Abby and Kristen, if you have the time, you can, you're, you know, you're more than welcome to stay and, and, and follow. Uh, but I mean, we'll definitely save the video too. Yeah, if you could like save the video, then like once I finally have access, then I'll come back to it probably. Okay. So this was helpful. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Right. See you then. Bye bye. All right. Um, all right. Let's continue then. Um, so, um, uh, since, um, since you have open R on the cluster, let's install a package that I like. Um, I'm going to send you the command um, on Slack. Um, to close um, R. Okay. No, don't close R. Don't close anything. Okay. Just follow. I'm just finding that command again. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Try copy in. Yeah, copy and paste it into your um, into the terminal window of your R. Mm -hmm. Here. Yeah. Hit enter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so while that installs, um, can you go to Cyberduck? Cyberduck. Mm -hmm. Then go to uh, the edit window at the very top. Edit is Where to the it? left. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry, not there. Uh, go to CyberDoc at the very, very left. Very, very left. Top, top, top oh, left top, of your screen. Yeah. Then go to pref uh, CyberDoc. Then go to preferences. And then on a browser, which is the second window, click the very first option, which is show hidden files. Mm -hmm. And you can close this. 
because uh, the way CyberDoc works, you, we need to quit it. So go to the CyberDoc menu, then quit CyberDoc. Quit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can say later to the donate <laughs> button. It's not um, mandatory to donate, right? Yeah. So it's just, okay. Okay. So actually close our studio too. Okay. Because uh, we need to close our studio because we closed CyberDoc and so. Uh, Strictly yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So go to your applications and open CyberDoc. Yes, CyberDoc, CyberDoc, CyberDoc. Oh, I don't think you actually, um, you might have CyberDoc only your downloads. So oh, you yeah. might need to copy this into your applications folder. So drag it and drop it there um, into applications. Yeah, yeah so open. Mm -hmm. Because I use, I use CyberDoc so often, um, I would recommend right clicking on CyberDoc at the very bottom of your screen on the little dock itself. Here. Yeah, okay. right click on it. And then say options. Options. And then say keeping doc. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So at this point, um, on um, I need you to go to um your bookmark for the home directory. Is it home? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm gonna give you stuff to um so now you can see some hidden files that are in your home directory that we couldn't see before. Oh yeah. All right. Um RTC. Uh, okay. Um I'm gonna give you some stuff to copy paste. Mm -hmm. One second, sorry. Um, um, sorry, um, uh, go to CyberDoc, sorry. CyberDoc? Yeah, then say, uh, I think you can go to, can you right click there? Just, I'm, I forget what we can see. Right click? Um... Yeah, so right click uh, below the R, at the very end, if there's no files. Not, not, not on the, not there. Oh, just right click. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, click on a uh, new file. And then call it dot dot capital R dot capital profile profile without the space What's without this? any spaces. Yeah. Then click uh, edit. And so into that file copy paste the contents of what I just sent you. Okay. May I add a new line at the end, please? Sorry. Add an empty line at the end. Add. Now just press enter at the end. Okay. Not space. Yeah. Save this. You can close it. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's continue with the configuration stuff. Um, uh, now, um, can you um, create a new file on the CyberDoc? New file. Call it dot. Dot. Um, input. Input. Also, my letter. Yeah. Um, then RC. 
at the very end. No space. I'm going to give you stuff to copy paste into it. Okay. So edit. Is this right? Input first. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. And then Can I save this? Also. Yeah, so yeah, add a new line at the end. Uh, save it and close it. Uh, now on the cluster mm -hmm. on Gypsy. Cluster. With with Cyberduck. The Cyberduck. Okay. Uh, right click on bash underscore RC. Yes. It's the fourth one from the top to the bottom. Oh, this one. Mm -hmm. And edit it. Edit with. Edit with. Text edit. Mm -hmm. Now uh, replace all the com all the content of that. So delete all of it. Uh, sorry, uh, just leave the first line. Oh. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna edit. Let me, try Let me edit my message in on Slack. Okay. Um, and copy paste the contents of what I sent through Slack. This whole code. Okay. I don't need to copy this one, right? So. No, not that. No, just the contents. I did. So, um, let me double check what else we need to do. Um, um, okay. Um, yeah, so yeah, save it and close it, please. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so now um, on your Cyberduck, uh, um, uh, let's open, uh, go to, you know, human pilot. Human pilot. And then open the human pilot.r project uh, file. So that's not in the analysis, that's one level above. Oh, can I? Oh, oh. Okay. No, so, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so human pilot.r proj file. I it. it has the little oh, r one. symbol, yeah, yeah, that one. Try double click. Oh. No, uh, don't even yeah. don't double click. Um, right click, edit with our studio. Uh, say yes, because you want to close any files that were not synced. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, click OK. Um, so I think we, because we had an error, you need to uh, try again, open it from the cyber web. Oh. So, do I re open it again with Cyber? Yeah. Okay. So, sure. You need yeah. to open it. Um, so, do I? Hmm. 
Click okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure why we're having troubles. Um, all right. Anyway, go back to Cyberduck. Mm -hmm. um, let's open any R file that you want there. This one? All right. Um, so um, now, you know, imagine that you want to run this script, right? Um, what we would need to do, we would need to go to the terminal, right? Mm -hmm. To then uh, log in into the cluster. Oh, so S S H J. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, now you'll see that colors change and stuff. And yeah. so um, if you don't like the colors that I have, uh, you can, um, there's comments on the uh, bash RC script that say how you can change the colors. Oh, uh, but like these colors that I use, they work well with the dark backgrounds. So just to, you know, just to show you how I have my setup, you can always change decide to change it later. Okay. And go to R studio at the very top. Select preferences. Uh, under appearance. Um, on the editor team. No. Not not editor font. Editor team. There it is. Oh. The very last one. Where? Editor team there. Yeah. Scroll down to Merby War. Oh, editor team. Okay. Uh. Oh, sorry, what did you say? It's called to Mer Bibor. Mel Bibor. Yeah. And then click apply. Apply. Say and yes. Yes. Yeah, say yes. So, um, in case it quit, um, because it quit, um, yeah, click OK. Mm -hmm. Uh, you'll need to open the file again from okay. Cyberduck. So, the file? This is not the Cyberduck we know we were using. You have two of them open. Oh, this one. To avoid confusions, you can close one of them. Yeah. Mm. So that's the thing I use. So if you go to terminal, Oh. You can now log into the cluster with SSH space J. Mm -hmm. Then when you see the yellow stuff, right? Now that yeah. looks okay. Mm -hmm. It requests a computer uh, to run this stuff. And so let's imagine, I don't know exactly how much memory this requires, but let's say that this requires uh, 30 gigs of RAM mm -hmm. to run. So instead of using the default values for QRSH, we're going to have to use uh, more advanced ones. So type QRSH space dash L, L. space, space. Uh, mem for memory underscore free. Free. Equal without any space. Equal. Uh, 30 capital G for gigabytes. 32 G. Um, yeah, 32 you want. I would oh. suggest a 30, but 32 works also. Oh. Comma. 32 comma. Oh, Without that's... space. Is it big G or small? Uh, big G. Big G. G. Capital G. Uh, now type H for hard. H. Underscore. Underscore. B for virtual. And then mem for memory. Mem. <laughs> Equal also 32 capital G. Okay. Then press enter. And so this is going to request a, um, a compute node with 32 gigs of free RAM. Uh -huh. Oh, I see. Um, and then also set your limit to 32 gigs total. Yeah. And now you can see that it's automatically loading the modules. Oh, yeah. 
So this is also stuff that I edited on the bash RC file, uh, such that if you type capital R, now it actually will work, but don't type it yet because we're not in the right directory. Mm -hmm. um, so actually, um, uh, type exit, sorry, you forgot one step. Um, uh, let me, I want to type it on, uh, on Slack. Can you go back to cyberdoc to, uh, the one that is on your home directory? Um, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I didn't finish typing it. Uh -huh. um, um, uh, let me, uh, can you um, right click and edit on the bash RC file? Where, oh, this one and right click and go text daddy. Mm -hmm. Can I close this config? Yeah, you can close that one. Okay. Yeah, now I just have it open. And now uh, copy paste the what I sent you. Mm -hmm. Uh, into the very end of the bash RC file. Okay. Remember to add an empty line at the end. I have an empty line here. No, at the very end of your file. At, oh, okay. So, like this. Yeah. You can yeah. still add the, uh, the empty line before the shortcut. Oh, okay. Just to make it easier for you to see the blocks of the mm -hmm. logical blocks. All right. So, save this. Okay. We close it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So go back to your uh, go back to uh, your R studio. Uh, so now type QR uh, and then use the up arrow. Up arrow. No, no, no. Uh, delete the space. That the space. Okay. Up arrow on your keyboard. Up arrow. Up arrow. Oh. Okay. And so what we also changed is the behavior of the up arrow. Mm -hmm. uh, now it uh, searches through your um, history of files, of commands, sorry. History. With the ones that start. Where is the... Oh, history. Not that history, that's the R history. No, no, no. Oh, thank you. No. There's a history of bash commands in, your in the cluster. Um, okay. Oh, so. Um, so can you go to the very end of the terminal? If you, you scroll up. Mm -hmm. Right. So the previous last command that we typed with, that started with the letters QR was the QRSH space dash L space man free, all of that, mm -hmm. right? So when you type QR and then up arrow, mm -hmm. it searched through your commands that started with uh, QR, right? Oh. And then he found that one. If you press up arrow again, it's gonna go back to the, another command that starts with QR, right? Oh, it was okay. QRSH. So we, we want the one that has a memory. So press the down arrow. Down, oh, okay. Now press enter. Press enter. Right, because that's the command we want. Okay. okay, now that we're there, let's use our new shortcut that we made, which is called spatial. So just type the word spatial. Press enter. Mm -hmm. What this did is that it changed the directory to our main analysis directory. You can type PWD to see where we are now. Um. Right. So, so this is the equivalent of the bookmark that we make with a cyberdoc. Okay. Right, because otherwise we need to change it to this directory. Mm. So if I use this command, I don't need to go through 
CyberDoc to open this no, file. No, no, no. You always need to use CyberDoc. The CyberDoc oh. is how we open the files from the cluster. Okay. But then, but then this al alias lets you go into the directory of where things are, mm -hmm. right? Now, why is that? Well, that's because when you uh, type the capital letter R, you're going to open R inside the working directory that you're in. Oh, and so the particular script analyze underscore hs underscore pilot dot r assumes that you're located in the slash dclo2 slash leader slash asia slash spatial transcomics slash human pilot directory. Mm. So now we can open r and run our script. So you'll notice now that it actually. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, opened R and uh, something else that we did was uh, we we're making it such that it loads by default the color out package. And that one makes it nice to see errors and stuff. So you let's just print an error in R and we can do that with the command stop. Open parentheses. Quotes. Quotes. No, no, no. The single or double quotes, whichever quotes you prefer. Oh, uh, quotes here. Mm -hmm. Then type type hello. How can I spell? Sir, could you just say? Uh, type hello. Hello. Oh. Then close quote, close parenthesis. Okay. Press enter. Oh, you didn't load it. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Um, can you go to CyberDoc? Okay. Uh, can you open the contents of the .r profile file? Okay. .r profile. Oh, profile. Where is it? Right there. One oh, here. Yeah. yeah. Do I go text edit? Yeah, text edit. Okay. Hmm. All right, I don't know why it's not recognizing. Mm. Can you c copy paste those con the content of that into your R session? The whole? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Our session is here, right? No, in the terminal. In the terminal, oh. Copy and paste. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, print again, stop, hello. You can use the up arrow. Oh. Oh. And hit enter. Still. Okay. So I'm not sure why it's not loading. Um, can you open a new terminal for me inside um, our studio? Is it command T still? No, this time is you go to, um, you can um, click where it says terminal one uh, parenthesis busy. Mm -hmm. Oh, new terminal. Yeah, so there, there shows the shortcut, which is like shift, alt, R. Start. Can you log into the cluster? Oh, okay. Stop chain. Mm -hmm. Can you cure SH into a compute node? Cure SH. Mm -hmm. um, can you type uh, ls space dash LHA? Yeah, so I can see the permissions for your um, R profile are okay. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it has a space on the name. Um, let's just see, can you type MM, uh, sorry, M, uh, M, um, MV for move? Um, leave? No, so MV as in uh, victory. 
it's, so it's this is the command move so space yes. dot r profile dot no 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 uh, sorry instead of um can you uh, go and delete the space and the e oh. delete the e too oh, delete the e. then press tab press tab okay so it does have a space okay so uh, now type dot r profile without the space at the end dot profile without the space yeah, yeah. Here. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, press the space. Yeah, then um, press space again. Press space again. Now, now type dot R profile. R. Capital R profile. Profile. Then press enter. Press enter. Yeah, so when you name the file to CyberDog, you added a space at the end. So that's why oh, it wasn't oh. loading. So now now let's let's test it just uh, uh, open R on that terminal too. Open R that terminal. On terminal two, that's where you are. Just type the capital letter R for opening the R program. Okay, so now it does load the color out package, right? Oh, uh. We, we had an issue with your um, dot r profile name. It was dot, you called it dot r profile with a space when it should have been dot r profile without any space. Did we just fix it? Fix it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't even look at that. Yeah, so uh, you can exit r with uh, the q command, q parenthesis, uh, open and close. Close. No, 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 don't type the word close. Oh, but, just... uh, close the parenthesis. Yeah. Okay. Press enter. So, uh, type N for no, um, and you can exit this terminal too with uh, the word exit. Mm -hmm. So go back to terminal one. So normally, uh, uh, yeah, it will load the color out uh, package by default, uh, and this will um, you know add colors to your um, session. As you can see uh, before, without the color out package, the error, mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to see, right? You have to see like, um, it says like summarize experiment, uh, then the next line says user install packages, we'll override system ones. Then we have our um, uh, greater than stop hello mm -hmm. command. But below it, it has an error, but, mm -hmm. um, but it's hard to notice. And now oh, with the color right. out package, it will put it in red and that'll be right. super easy to, it's to highlight the things, yeah, yeah. need to be okay. okay. So at this point now, we've uh, opened uh, um, the script that we want to run through CyberDot um, um, into our studio. Then in our studio, we open the terminal, we mm -hmm. uh, SSH into the cluster, mm -hmm. then we use our alias called spatial to change the directory to our main um, working directory. Mm -hmm. Or this, uh, which now the directory that we're in in the cluster matches the one where our script lives in. So um, analyze underscore hs underscore pilot dot r is a script that lives at the at the DCL to liver Jaffe special transit human pilot directory, right? Mm -hmm. And we can double check that in our R terminal is in that same directory by typing the command in R get wd which is get working directory okay wd yeah without space uh, open parenthesis without space close parenthesis the space right. yes, right here. Yeah. yeah so we're in the correct directory now oh, so yeah. now we can start running code and the way we do that is um you go to line three line three Right, uh, we can execute that line on the terminal using the shortcut Alt, Option, Command, Enter. Alt, Option, Command, Enter, Alt, Option. Right, and so right now it's loading the EBI image package. Right, um, for example, let's run the, the fifth line, TIFFS. Fifth line, yeah.
comment that. Try running. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you execute it, please? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we can go to the terminal on the bottom left and just type tiffs to see what it has. Right, right. Oh. But for example, we can run stuff that is not in our script. We can use, for example, the file dot exists. Um, exist. Uh, with an S at the end. Huh? It's plural. File dot exists. Oh, files dot exist. No, no, no. File singular then exists plural. Oh, sorry, I can't. Files. Is this wrong? File singular dot exists plural. File singular dot exists. Oh, I see. Open parenthesis. Uh -huh. Then we can pass it our, um, our objectives. Close parenthesis. I'm lost. <laughs> Just... type, type the object name, tips. Tips. Oh. Then close parenthesis. Oh, okay. Execute that. All right. So this is, for example, our code that we can run that is not saved in our script, right? Mm. Um, something that I like to do mm -hmm. uh, in my scripts is to run. Um, at the very end of it, I always run um, these lines of code. Um, I actually always save them on, on the scripts themselves too. Um, uh, and, I, uh, and I save the output of this. Um, and so, sorry, let me edit that. Okay, I just edited it. Um, so this is something I always include in the scripts I write, and I highly recommend that you do the same. Okay. And you just copy and paste that code into your terminal, just so we can see the output of it. Mm -hmm. Press okay. enter. So we scroll up. So first, I read like, that. There we have the library session info command that loads the package called session info. Oh, yeah. Um, that's a nice small package that I like quite a lot. Mm. Uh, and we'll use one function from it. The next is that I say like, oh, I'm gonna print the reproducibility information. This is gonna be useful later on if we key sub anything. Um, uh, then I like to print the, the time when it was run. Um. Right. Uh, then proc that time tells us how much time this hot R session has been open. So it's been open for almost 700 seconds. 700 seconds. Ah, oh, I see. Right. So this oh. can tell us like how much it actually took to run. Mm -hmm. And then I'm changing the uh, the width of the prompt to 120 characters because um, I need it long enough to fit the information. Um, and then I'm gonna. Then I like to use the session underscore info function from the session info package, mm. and this prints. It prints the R version that we're using. So it's saying R version three point six point one. What operating system we're using, which is CentOS Linux seven, uh, the date itself, and some other information. Um. Then under packages, if you scroll further down, it tells us like what packages we have. So for example, you stop there. You stop there. We see that we have the um, eight. Uh, stop, stop. Um, oh, yeah. Um, so you see that we have the A bind package version 1.4 5. And that's the date version for that package. And we installed it from CRAN. Mm -hmm. But then we saw, for example, the BIOS generics package version 0 0.32.0 from Bioconductor. And we saw the, uh, the package color out version oh. 1.2-2 from GitHub, right? Oh, so basically. So this is really useful. Histories, yeah. yeah. And, records. and this is really useful for tracing bugs because packages can change, um, things can change. And analysis can take two years, for example. Um, and so you might want to have the versions of the packages that you use saved such that when you write the method section of your paper, you can say exactly what versions of packages you use. 
uh, what version of R you use. Mm -hmm. If you scroll, if you keep scrolling all the way to the end, at the very end, it tells us like what are the paths to the packages, uh, to the installation packages, right? So the first one, it says slash users, slash username, slash R, slash 3.6.nex. So this is, for example, where like the color out package lives because we all, we were the only ones to install it. Mm -hmm. But next, it, it points to two locations that are like uh, global across Gypsy. And this is where the cluster admins install a lot of packages for people to use. Right. That's why, for example, the EBI image, you can load it because that exists already in that path. Mm -hmm. right. So all this information is really useful. And I always tend to um, copy paste it into scripts. So let's just do this uh, out of practice. So like on the terminal, select and copy everything that was the output of this command. So you need to, uh, with your mouse, you need to left click and then drag up. Yeah. Left click and drag up. Yeah, keep keep no keep going up, keep going up. Uh, now, yeah, here, yeah, right click, copy, and on the very top on line thirteen, let's say, press enter, and then right click paste. All right. Now select the same lines that you just pasted. Select the same line. Yeah. This line. Oh. No, further above. Yeah. All of those lines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of like left click, drag. For selecting. So no, not right click. Oh. Left click. Left click. Yeah. And drag. Drag. Uh -huh. So now you can um, now you can go to the little one, which is um, you see analyze underscore hspilot.r. Uh, on the there's a source and save, then there's a magnifying glass, then then there's a little one. This one. The next one. Next one. Yeah, magic one. Yeah, code yeah. tools. So click there, and then you can select the uh, comment and comment lines option, which is in the middle. This one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's shift command C, and so this automatically comments all the all the all those lines, and you can see that if you go scroll to the left, go to the left. Yeah, now you can see it out of the pound signs, which are the comment signs. Oh, okay. So it basically cool. make the hashtags. Yeah, automatically. Right. So this is a you know a particular file that someone already made. So let's not edit any of this. So can you just close um, close the file and um, click the little X? Not not the big X. Little X next to analyze. Yeah. Click it on save because we're not saving any of that. Uh, on terminal one, can you quit? No, don't no, quit like that. Uh, on your uh, terminal window, type Q, open parentheses. Oh, okay. Type Q. Click N, because we always, we never want to save the workspace image. Oh, okay. Um, then exit, because yes. you want to exit from the um, compute cluster that we requested 32 gigs of RAM mm -hmm. for, right? Um, uh, and you can exit completely from the clusters too, type in exit again. Mm -hmm. And uh, now you're back on your computer, right? Yeah. So you, can do the, um, you can close this terminal window by typing exit. Close window, type in exit, okay. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and so that closed terminal window one. Let's, let's go to terminal window two. Also type in exit. Is it terminal two? Oh. oh. Yeah, so it, we were on one, it closed it, and it completely exited. Okay, let's and go. now I'm doing the same thing, right? Exit. Yeah, for terminal two. Yeah. Uh, so it actually exited the cluster and now yeah. you're exited. Yeah, completely. Now well, you can close our studio safely. Right, so that would be the end of the session. So now let's practice something new where we can actually edit some stuff. So in your cyber doc, go to, uh, go to your home directory. Yeah, this is, I'm home. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> and I'll uh, um, uh, create a new file, which uh, was right click new file. Mm -hmm. And then let's call it um, reproducibility underscore uh, uh, point R, sorry. Okay. Let's reproducibility point R. Point R. Uh, without the underscore, sorry. Oh. Yeah. So click create. Okay. And then um, edit that with uh, R Studio. Edit, oh. edit that with R Studio. Now into your R script, copy and paste the commands. Um, don't do anything there yet. Uh, on the R script, copy and paste the commands that I gave you on Slack for reproducibility. This one. Mm -hmm. Try paste it in. Paste it on the top on your script. Oh. Um. I like to add an, a line after line one, for example. And then I also like to leave an empty line at the end. To... Yeah. And save it. Okay. Save it. Save. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. So now this is saved from the cluster and stuff. Um, oh, now let's imagine that this is a script that takes a lot of hours to run or even if it takes half an hour to run, mm -hmm. and then we want to run it on, on a, on a um, uh, um, we want to submit this job such that it runs um, with a cluster and, um, and we can like leave our computer and then come back hours later or a day later or a week later or something. Um, and so I'm going to teach you a new package. Yeah, so open up on that link. In order to use this package, we need to install it on the cluster. So in order to do that, can you go to R Studio, open the terminal, QRSH, and then open R. So first you need to log in to oh. the cluster. All right. Okay. Then you need to request a compute node. Search. Once you're given a compute node, you can open R. Okay. In the meantime, uh, through Cyberdog, can you open um, on your home directory? Mm -hmm. um, can you open the uh, dot sge underscore request file and edit with? Let's edit, yeah. So this file over here specifies the defaults um, that you use for um, uh, when you uh, QRSH and when you um, uh, uh, and when you key sub. So um, can you show me the contents of that file, please? Oh, just one. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's setting the default says the memory free and HVMM to five gigs for you. Right? Oh, that's the default. Okay. Yeah. Then it says the maximum file size that you can create to 10 gigabytes, mm. which a lot of people forget about this setting. So I would increase it to 100 gigabytes because okay. a lot of files that we write are above 10 gigs but below 100. Um, and then I will copy paste what I sent to you on Slack okay. at the end of it. Um, although I would edit it for. Do I add an empty line after? Okay. I would edit it. I mean, instead of my email, put your email. Okay. Um, I'm gonna... mm -hmm. That's it, right? Easy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
always remember to leave an empty line at the end of the oh, okay. Save it and close it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can close that one too. Okay. And okay. that one. <laughs> uh, this one we only use uh, temporarily, so you can delete. Okay. So uh, go back to your R session. Mm -hmm. uh, I see that it, you know you Kira says she loaded the modules. Can you open R? Okay. And then on the, from the website, can you copy and paste the commands for installing the package that I'm going to teach you about? Website. This one. Yeah. So actually, you click on the blue button on the on the right side that copies yeah. stuff. And then now you can paste it. Mm -hmm. Press enter. Oh. So this is installing a package from GitHub that I made called SCE jobs, which uh, simplifies um, submitting uh, jobs to the cluster. Mm -hmm. uh, now it wants you to update stuff that might need updating, but for now we don't want to do any of this. So press the option three, which is none. Enter. Go yeah, ahead. enter. Okay. You can see that it installed it on users. Uh, well, now it's printing a lot of stuff, but it was installing it on the users, your username slash r slash 3.6.x. It's like in purple. Mm -hmm, yeah. Okay. But right, I mean, this package in particular has to compile stuff from uh, from C, so that's why it's doing a bunch of new. Uh, or it's installing some dependencies that require C. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's installing some stuff. In the meantime, while this installs, mm -hmm. can you go to the website? Website. Yeah. And then uh, click uh, the very top. You, you you scroll down too far down. Oh, fall click, down. Uh, yeah, you scroll up. Yeah. So you see the at the top of it. There's a little home symbol, and then next to it, there's reference. Yeah, I can see. So click there. Mm -hmm. This is where we can see the help. Uh, all the functions that this package has and a short title description of each of them. Mm -hmm. Let's click on the job underscore single one. Click on the job. Where is it? Oh, here. Single. Here. Not, yeah. So this is the main one that we'll use. And so this one you can use to specify a shell script, a bash script for running um, something in the cluster mm -hmm. where uh, this job single function takes a name it has to be a character of length one. Then we're going to use the create underscore shell option equal to true instead of the default false. Mm -hmm. Then under memory, you can request how much memory you need. So it okay. could be 10 gigabytes, it could be more. You can request uh, the number of cores that you want. In this case, it's one, but you could request, let's say, five cores. Uh, if you request five cores, then the total memory for your job is going to be the number of cores multiplied by the memory per core. So it's going to be 10 times five, it will be 50 gigabytes. Um, and then you can say like, oh, what's the directory you want? What's the maximum file size? And some command. Okay. So, um, uh, uh, so uh, can we go back to our studio? Mm -hmm. So it's finished running as you installing as you jobs. Mm -hmm. So can you load the library? Can you load the library? So oh, the library. terminal type library, open parenthesis. Oh, yeah. Open parenthesis, mm -hmm. SGE jobs. Close parenthesis. Hit enter. Yeah. So that loads that package and then mm -hmm. we can, uh, we're going to run the function job single. So type job underscore single. Okay. Uh, underscore single. Open parenthesis. The name, so type name. Mm -hmm. Type the word name. Okay. Can I? Yeah. It's going to be equal to. Okay. Uh, to equal to. Uh, on quotes, put um, uh, reproducibility because this is for the you know this particular job. Mm -hmm. that would Close quotes, and then comment create underscore shell. We're gonna say true. Create shell. 
on the score. Yeah. Okay. Show true. Um, and then let's say memory. Memory. Let's uh, say equal to uh, one gigabyte. So quotes. Oh. oh. Mm -hmm. Why is it? Close quotes it. one gigabyte one G. Oh one capital G. G. Okay. Capital G. Yeah. Close mm -hmm. quotes. Not close. Um, close parentheses. Press enter. And so then this says, oh, it created a logs directory at logs. It created the shell file reproducibility.sh. And then it says like, oh, you want to run this on the cluster, use qsub space reproducibility.sh. But this one in particular, we need to edit it a tiny bit. Um, if you go to cyberduc, mm -hmm. um, uh, refresh, because now we need, uh, we just created a file that is not present there. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can see. Yeah, so now edit with uh, reproducibility.sh. Oh. Now you double click. Oh, I tried. Like right downloads it. Um, edit with. Edit with. Um, yeah, text edit is OK. Mm -hmm. uh, where it says R script dash E, all of that at the very end. Yeah, instead of R script dash E options, all of all of that stuff. Oh, here, yeah. Yeah. So delete all the dash E, all of that, and just type reproducibility dot R. Now leave leave R script. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's lowercase. To usability R. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, save this. Like this. Yeah. And so um, let's go to um, our studio and open a new terminal and SSH and then QRSH. Mm -hmm. Terminal, SSH, train. Uh, Logging into the cluster, then QRSH to request a compute node. You're always supposed to request a compute node. Mm -hmm. um, after logging in. Too. Yeah, after logging in. Mm -hmm. um, and it always takes some time <laughs> to find it. Yeah, node. it takes a few seconds because it's like finding a computer for you. OK. Um, and then loading it. Um, there we go. So now we can actually run our script, which was the qsub space reproducibility.sh Where is the? It's Q sub space reproducibility. Reproducibility. Dot sh. Then press enter. Okay. Now type Q stat. Q and stat for a statistic. Stat. Press enter. We'll see there that uh, you make your window a bit uh, wider. You'll see that it's um, the state is QW. Um, so type it again, QSTAT, type again, QSTAT. Press on. Yeah, press on too. Oh, so I actually already finished running. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this was a fairly fast script. Oh. Um, but at the first time it said, um, imagine that this would have been like, you know, nicely formatted. It would have said uh, job ID, Twelve zero zero six zero eight. Call reproducibility uh, from the user S H O K W O N has a state Q W which is queued. Um, had it been running, had this been a, a script that took a while to run, it would have stayed in R for running, mm -hmm. right? And then it could have uh, under Q it would have told us what com um, compute node it was running on. Now this one actually ran fairly fast. So okay. this is a very short script. Um, so uh, you should have gotten an email. Email. Uh, and it might take a, a couple of minutes to, for your email to, to, for you to get an email. Mm -hmm. 
How can I make it small? Oh, sorry. So I need to. But um, you know, we don't. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure because we're recording this. I'm not sure you want to show this. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But can anyway, I... you should have gotten an email that will have some information about your job. Mm -hmm. Now, also, uh, in the meantime, go back to CyberDoc. Okay, go back. I'm tracking it in, in my phone, on my phone. Okay. So here in CyberDoc, you see that it created a logs directory. Open mm -hmm. that logs directory. Okay, double Oh. Yeah, double double click. Double click. And you see that I created the reproducibility um, dot txt file. Mm -hmm. Press the, uh, the key space on your keyboard. Press the press space. Yeah, just space. Okay. This is what it does. It like it lets you preview the file, and so we can see here that the log for this says adding Git modules. Um, sorry, I didn't leave modules and it says loading Git, loading module for Git status size, Git LFS, our main, all of those things, right? Um, then it says like loading R, it says job starts, print the date, then it says Gypsy info, it says your username, the job ID, which was 1200608, the job name, representability, it ran on host, complete dash 103. This is useful in case you run a lot of jobs and some, let's say you run a hundred jobs and 10 of them fail. Mm -hmm. Maybe all of 10 of them fail in a, in a particular computer and maybe that computer has a problem. Oh. Um, then it says like, what are the modules that you actually had loaded? So you had a bunch of them loaded, including MATLAB, community centers, oh. um, all of that. And this is normal. Um, a lot of these are default modules that get loaded. And then it has the output from our R commands, from our actually, uh, from our actual R script, which was reproducibility information, mm. the date, how much time it took, which in this case, it took 0.65 seconds to run. Mm -hmm. It was a very fast job. And then since the, the session information, right, it says like, oh, like, you know, ran in R 3.6.1, CentOS 7, uh, the packages, you know, you had assert that version 0.21, Etc. Right. It's like and, the it ends, it, and it ends with job ends. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is how you can run. Um, this is uh, so the SGE jobs package, the function job underscore single, allows you to create a bash file for um, um, for uh, then running uh, any R job or any other cluster stuff that you want to run. Um, and then print a lot of information that is useful for reproducibility, mm -hmm. like all these like job ID, all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, and you can see it on the shell file itself that I think you open through CyberDoc. I think you have it on one of your text edit windows. Oh, so strike close. Yeah, you can close that. Mm -hmm. um, I think you have it on, um, on text edit already open. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you can see there, like, you know, this is the um, uh, script, uh, this is the uh, bash script that got created by job underscore single from the mm -hmm. SGE jobs package. And it has a lot of this stuff, all of these commands. Mm -hmm. So the only part you really needed to edit was um, uh, our script part. Here, this part. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so, you know, this is where we imagine that reproducibility.r is a script that takes hours to run or something, right? Um, I just want to run it automatically uh, instead of having to run interactively. Um, the next From thing now, that we have left after all of this is, yeah. um, is, uh, is to do GitHub, but that's, you know, let, we'll do that in another session. Okay. Uh, uh, but like you should have gotten an email mm, yeah. in the cluster. Is this the email like your is this the email that you are? Yes, yes. Using? Okay. Yes. So there it has a lot of this information. So you uh, it, ha it should have somewhere there uh, um VMEM, I think. Mm. For virtual memory. Yeah. What what does it say there? 
Or can you show me the, to me it again? Okay. Can you? Uh, a little bit further away. Sorry. Yes, yeah, so it says max VMEM fifty-eight point three five three five nine M for megabytes. Oh, on the yeah. Yeah. The second so that's the maximum the virtual memory that your job uses, and this is useful later for, you know, learning how much memory things actually use. Ah, oh, so, so I can use this information for the later stuff. Like, yeah, right? so for, you run it once, we like maybe request more memory than you think you will need. The next time you reduce it such that you don't waste memory. I see. Right. If you're running the same like type of job, right? Is it already? Yeah ideal to save the memory for others or <laughs> other kind of things yeah yes yeah. So it's always best to keep track of it and see how you're doing mm -hmm. you don't want to waste memory because then you, if you waste too much memory you'll get you'll get uh, notified by the cluster administrators oh, i see they'll be like hey mm -hmm. you, they're gonna give me warning with this okay yeah yeah um so it's yeah, not so, hard. Oh, right 58 memory megabyte yeah, 58 megabytes, which is nothing really, right? Uh, <laughs> we re and we, we requested one gigabyte, right? So we <laughs> yeah. wasted a lot there. Oh, I see. But like, uh, we wasted a lot in terms of percent, but in, things, in terms of absolute memory, we didn't waste really much, right? Mm. Like one gigabyte of memory is not much. Not much, sure. Yeah. <laughs> but like, because like, I mean, some of the stuff that we run can take like 200 gigs of RAM and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So what is the maximum memory I can Granted, I can be granted. Oh, uh, uh, I forget what are the actual uh, limits right now. Uh, um, but... um, at some point, I think it's been around like 400 gigabytes of RAM. Oh. Uh, but well, that's I... across all your jobs and stuff. Okay. And then I'm, I'm computers gonna themselves. Uh -huh. Huh? I don't think I'm going to use that much of memory. <laughs> uh, you might use 100 gigs. Um, oh. Okay. But like, um, uh, across um sorry compute nodes themselves the biggest ones we have have uh 500 gigs of ram free oh. but that's if, the, if that's if no one is using them right so there's commands to check this but we'll, we can check we can go over those commands at another mm -hmm. time but the, i mean i'll just tell it to you um, yeah it's a qpic so i'll type it on slack okay um, qpic space dash q and then the name of the q uh -huh. um. Um. Do I paste it? Yeah, you can paste it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So let's say you actually had a job that was running through QSub, then it would tell you there the max VMEM at the very bottom. Mm -hmm. It would tell you like the max memory and stuff. Right now, those two are like QRSH sessions, so it doesn't tell you the maximum memory mm -hmm. that you need. Um, but if there were QSub sessions, you would. Now, QPIC, that lets you know. Um, can you scroll uh, up for me, please? Sir, QPIC. Yeah, you scroll before you type QPIC, just at the very top. Uh, so there it says, um, how many of those, uh, the first column says share, that tells us how, how many of them are assigned to share, um, or how many are actually used, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, like the ones of white um, background, those are like zero out of 48 are assigned to share. So, even though, for example, that first one compute 043 has a total memory free of 238 gigabytes right now, uh -huh. um, uh, zero out of the 48 of them are assigned to the shared queue, so you can't use it. Um, so that's not usable. But like, um, um, mm -hmm. then like for example, like, um, um,
you know, like a bit 47 has a lot of memory free, but it seems to be fairly full. Like number of, so people can fill up a compute node because they requested too much memory and none of it is free left. Mm -hmm. They requested all the compute cores from the compute node. Is this something I can choose, like the node, or is it just randomly assigned? It's just randomly assigned, but you can then, if you're requesting too much memory or too many cores, you can check uh, why your job is not running. Oh, I see. So check when I want to. Maybe, maybe you just need to request like one core less or, or like five gigabytes less of memory or something like that. Mm. Still, it'd be useful to check. Yeah. Yeah. Status or availability of memory. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool. But let's end it there. So, okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much for your time. Right. Right. See you. Good luck. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, by the way, if I want to go over this, we just try watch the recorded video again. Like, is it? Yeah, I'll post the video link. I'll post okay. all of this. Okay. Thank you. But I think I, I think we're gonna have to do a blog post or something. Mm -hmm. Quite a bit of information here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank well, you. Really. See you. Bye. Yeah. Have a good day. Thanks. You too. Bye. Thank you.